Hello again, everyone. This is Honeywell, and I am back with Banished. This is episode 7 of The Perfect Town. When we last left off, we had just received our first crop seed, which was wheat. And it was year 21, so we got that in the grounds. Um, we were filling out our trading posts. You see, we have some buildings paused. Let's up the speed here a little bit. And we have a food merchant. Food is good. We like food. So we'll trade our thousand venison for three thousand Thank you. Very nice. Um, we were also over here with our livestock. And I said we were going to go ahead and split these this episode. So let's do that. Let's see. Sheep. Split. Thank you. 22. Oh, you know what? We need another. What is that? I'm giving you a job. Relax. Um, this is actually a bad idea. Let's, uh, well, I guess if a disease comes, I can empty them into the half full pastures. Um, basically, you always want to have a spare pasture as a backup, so if one of your um, herds is infected, you can just empty out the pen, which will immediately end the infestation. Okay, so is this right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six. Okay, sheep, sheep, cows. And as soon as we have another one of these ready, we'll go ahead and split the cattle. I also said that we were going to um, get these forest hubs up and running. And we're going to do that. Off camera, I went ahead and planned these out so you wouldn't have to uh, sit through me fumbling and not being able to talk. So we're going to do this as well. Um, it looks like they already got the stockpiles finished. I plan these with, um, again, huge 10 by 10 stockpiles. And I also um, left room at each site for a second woodcutter if need be. Basically woodcutters, um, a rough estimate is they chop about a, a thousand firewood a year. So educated workers get four um, pieces of firewood out of one log. So that's roughly 250 logs. Now a maxed out forester um, brings in somewhere around three to 350 logs. So there's a surplus of logs every, every year. So that's why a second, a second woodcutter on these large stockpiles can come in handy. Okay, we're going to raise the limits on that. What's our food limit? 35. That's double it. Double what we have right now. So we'll raise it to 40. Oh, let's go check this out. And we're going to make this... cattle and we'll split this one did we just have more oh well maybe I'm imagining things and that looks like it's good 
Let's get back here. So a woodcutter, I hope I finished that sentence. So a woodcutter can potentially, um, one forester's lodge can provide more logs than one woodcutter can handle, which is why we left space for two. I'm going to unpause the barns. Um, a well. A storage barn on this side. Did I put a well in here? No, and I want to. So we'll get that there. And then they can, uh, as soon as something starts happening back here, we'll fill in the houses as we're able to. Let's see. Actually, this is saying that we have what? Quite a few houses we can build. I'm going to go ahead and unpause a slew of these houses and see see if any of them start to get built. Then we'll go check out that trader. Oh, and you know what else I also had said uh, the last episode? I said uh, mines and nomads were a sucker's bet. And I explained uh, why I felt that way about the nomads, but I didn't go into the mines at all. So I guess while we're waiting for this stuff to be built, we can talk about that a little bit. And they're bringing just what I want them to. So we'll turn our 1,000 venison into 3,000 different crops. And we're always going to want the, the items that we're trying to stockpile. So we'll always purchase those, which are apples, beans, wheat, and fish. And then we'll just get a variety of whatever else they bring. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, they didn't do a, we what, we have an early winter here? Let's see. That's still not bad, especially considering this is the first season and I think they might have been a little bit late to get these planted. Not too shabby. We'll take it. Check on our herds. Good, and then we have those pastures ready. Maybe we'll put in that second tailor soon. And more trades. Potato seeds, not yet. Thank you. And what about you? Uh, general goods. Let's see. We have 352 venison. Hang on. Uh, steel tools, always. Well, not always, but for right now, yes, please. What is that, 125 firewood? Dismissed. Okay, good, you're a good couple. And 352. So, 1056 in wheat. And what else do they have? Iron tools, squash seeds. Uh, no thank you. Okay, everything back here is going as well as can be expected. Our food is increasing nicely, which is good, considering our population is growing rapidly. We're up to 143 citizens. Okay, uh, back to, to mines and quarries being a sucker's bet. Basically, one they're not renewable. Once you place a, a quarry and a mine, they cannot be, that land can't be used again. And 
The quarries and mines themselves only provide a relatively small amount of resources. I went ahead and uh, looked at the game files and tested it out myself. And an iron mine and a stone, iron mines and a stone quarry only provide 4,000 um, units of stone and iron. That is not a lot at all. Um, coal mines are uh, a lot better. They provide 8,000 units of coal. So if you're going to place a mine, um, you'd probably be better off um, not switching back and forth between the between coal and iron as need be. Um, because the coal mines provide so much more coal, um, it's best to have uh, to keep that as as a dedicated coal mine because you can get up to 8,000 units of coal from a mine. Also during that playtest, I think I had over 15 deaths, accidental deaths in those mines, and they used almost 2,500 tools. So if you're placing mines all over the place because you have a tool sh shortage, uh, you're kind of defeating the purpose. I mean, only 4,000, you're going to get, what, 4,000 iron, and it's going to cost you 2,500 tools? Now, of course, that was for um, one, one stone quarry and one iron and one coal mine. Still, that is an awful lot. If you have a, a tool shortage, the worst thing you can do is, is throw more people in your mines. Um, so because of that, I think they're, it's really a sucker's bet. Um, you're much better off, instead of placing a stone quarry, you're much better off uh, putting in a, a sheep pasture or something and trading the, the wool for all the materials that, that you need. You definitely don't come out ahead with those. Now that's not to say that they're, they're never appropriate. I mean, just just be mindful of the fact that um, they're gonna run out and you're gonna want a more sustainable uh, source of these things eventually and I'm a big fan of trading I think as everybody knows and I actually have a small um, section of the map earmarked for some some quarries and mines so it's not like I I don't think are ever appropriate but if you're placing mine after mine because they run out um, it's probably not the wisest use of the space that you have available and uh, let's unpause the rest of this group of houses and see see if we can't handle them again expanding as fast as we possibly can um, we're up to 151 citizens at a hundred food per year that's roughly 15,000 food so we have enough food and we have the ability to trade for more I just wanted to bring that up just so so you know that I take those things into consideration as I'm um, building all of these houses And, great. I'm gonna unpause our Forester Lodges as well. Also with um, mines and quarries, they actually um, detract from happiness. And as I think everyone's aware, unhappy citizens um, can really impact your pro productivity a lot. Um, they idle more, so they're not working. And if they're not working, they're not producing anything. Uh, we'll like corn seeds. Sometimes, depending on the temperature, um, corn can grow. Can 
can grow a little bit better than wheat. So the option is always nice. So I think I was saying that they detract from happiness. They have a, uh, a radius of 30 in every direction. So if you take your, your road tool and at the, say this is your mine, go out here and count to 30. Anyone who lives in that vicinity is going to receive kind of, I don't know, like a debuff to their happiness. Which isn't terrible, but it's definitely something you want to keep keep in mind. And this merchant is bringing uh, food that we don't want. So before they go, we're going to go ahead and tell them the things that we do want. So that's all they'll bring from now on. And basically we want um, the orchard items and the crop field items. Everything else either costs too much or we'll produce on our own. And every visit, please. Okay, thank you. Um, besides drawing out the road, another good rule of thumb to measure the, the radius that it's going to impact happiness is take a look at your herbalist hut. The herbalist hut also has a radius of 30. So if you place a mine right here, place your herbalist hut over it, and then you can see the range, what's going to be in it that's going to have a, a hit to their happiness. I mean, if that's something that, that concerns you. I do pay attention to the happiness just because I'm going to pause these houses for a little bit. We're getting a lot of students back there. And it's going to take them to forever to graduate because they're going to be so far away from their school. So we'll pause these for a little bit. And no thank you on those. And let's, let's increase the firewood in these two docks on the end here. So anyway, happiness isn't my first consideration, but it is something that I that I keep in mind. I try and get the um, cemeteries built. I put in chapels. I um, I don't let the houses get too crowded. And those are all things that can help or hinder house. I I definitely don't want them to starve. Starving. <laughs> Starving impacts happiness. Right now, while you're growing, it's kind of, it is what it is. Um, towards the late game, though, if you have an unhappy population, maybe because of massive um, elder die-off, and you don't have enough uh, grave plots for them, um, it can really, it can really impact your, your productivity and it kind of spirals out of control. So then you have, um, some unhappy citizens producing less. So you run into a food problem and then they're hungry, which impacts their health and happiness. And then because your population is unhealthy, they're more susceptible to disease, and then everyone is sick, and that's impacting it even more. Um, it can really spiral out of control quickly. And then because they're producing less, you might end up producing less tools. Um, it is, it is easy for things to get out of hand quickly in this game. I will split these. And then here's our backup pasture. I'm not sure, but I think I might put some more pastures back here and across the way here. Just because I think they're great for, for trading. Okay. 
but I haven't planned that far in advance yet. We'll see what happens. And our herbalist. And I think we have enough food to get this marketplace up and running. Um, I like to have increments of 10,000 food per marketplace. So I have one here, this marketplace back here, which is great, bursting at the seams. I like to see that. This one is doing well too. So I think we can safely open up this third marketplace. We're going to up our foresters. I'm keeping them maxed out because I'm trading firewood. And it looks, I think I have a few houses for each section. Well, these are good. So we can unpause this stuff. and pause a couple of these houses and see what we get. I should probably wait though, but yeah, you only live once, right? Right. No biggie. I'll do that just to get rid of those lines. And maybe we'll speed this up. Let's see. Um... Okay, to work, I'm really surprised that we were, managed to get a full harvest from that field when... Okay, okay very good. It looks like this is the slowest, um, the slowest field to get harvested. Let's see, resource merchant, apple seeds. I am going to buy apple seeds, unless I already have them. I have corn, wheat, chicken, sheep, and cattle. I am not a seed collector any longer. I mean, I will eventually get to it, but in these early days, I would like, I would rather have my trade goods available for something that I'm going to use right away. And steel tools are always welcome. Stone. We like stone. Logs. And what is that? 2800? Uh, like 700 and this is exactly why I want the firewood available for for things like that things that we'll use right away and no thank you and what about you a food merchant good we're bringing just what we want we have a thousand venison to trade Let's see apples yes please wheat and wheat as well we really should be um, getting a getting a, a few taverns up and running here why is that not letting me place that We'll get some barns over here. And um, I guess we can put in two token taverns. I'm really not sure that we have the room to 
we have the housing over here yet for those, but we'll see. I might keep them unstaffed. Okay, great. We have a gatherer's hut done. 167. Our population is growing quickly. A woodcutter. Yes, please. A hunting cabin. We're going to increase the number of hunters and max those out um, because I'm trading trading venison and we can use the leather for four warm coats Let's increase the priority over here let's see what we get let's see okay that's a fine it's a student but oh well it happens they can grow into their positions I'd rather Oh, the marketplace up here must have came online. Okay, and you'll see it took all of the vendors from everywhere else and used them to um, stock this. We're going to have two vendors up here, and we're going to reduce, reduce that accordingly and then add the two vendors. And we'll see how that makes out. Um, because I'm uh, trading for food, a lot of that food is going to end up in this marketplace, and I wouldn't be surprised if this field starts uh, bringing its wheat to the marketplace as well. Okay, looking good, looking good. Um... Yeah, why not? Let's let's be crazy and unpause these houses as well. And we'll unpause the hunting cabin. The woodcutter. And the gatherer's hut. Let's go see what this trader has. Maybe it's something good. Uh, chickens and sheep. No, thank you. And this is another annoying thing about playing at 10 times speed. The merchants never stop. Plum and peach, no thank you. And food. Food is good. We like food. Um, okay, and that's a fine couple. So 3,000. Apples, yes, please. Okay, good, good. Let's see who ends up in this house. Uh, no thank you. Let's try that again. Those four vendors are more than capable of keeping the market stocked, even with these additional houses we're building back here, which is good to see. Nice. Good. And that's better. Anytime, that's why I keep the houses pinned so I can see um, who is moving in. And if I don't like it, I can either upgrade it if there's still wood houses to kick the couple out, or I could use the remove structure, which will do the same thing, and then reclaim it and basically give the game another chance to to pick a couple that I like better. I think we only have 268 stone left, so I think we're going to put a stockpile over here. We're going to slow down the game a little bit, and we're going to put a stockpile over here. Maybe a couple dotted in the forest, like we've been doing. Uh, 
bench. A woodcutter, good. A hunting cabin, three more hunters. Excellent. And we'll go ahead and gather up some of this stone. Very nice. Um, and we'll unpause some of these tunnels because we are just about well not just about but this way um, we'll have access to these new areas when we're ready to to expand when we come back I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here when we come back we'll concentrate on getting our our trading district um, more filled out. We'll introduce some um, some taverns as well as think about getting this area up and running which would include a few more fishing huts and perhaps depending on our quantity of wool which is starting to rise. Um, perhaps we'll get some tailors going and we'll start trading wool coats as well okay if you made it this far thank you for watching and we'll see you next time